I want to uh, talk to you this Sunday and next Sunday uh, from uh, the subject matter that he won't let me see it. Mm -hmm. He won't let me see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then next Sunday he won't let me hear it. So I'm just going to use uh, a part of the text this morning. He, he won't let me see it and he won't, and he won't let me hear it. Uh, and then I need to fill it. And this is coming from John chapter 12. Uh, starting at verse 39, and, and, and in particular, uh, this morning, if you will, just a moment of your time, we appreciate you, uh, those that have come to praise God in spirit and truth, uh, allowing me to share with you uh, the word of God, uh, that we can grow by uh, his, his word and have richer lives as Christians. Uh, but the Bible says something that uh, for some time, I think I read over uh, in verse 39. And because sometimes we, we're so busy blaming stuff on, on the enemy uh, that we miss uh, God's work. Uh, and I want to show that to you. Amen? Amen. And so if you have just a minute of your time, and if you, you probably need a pen and some paper, because I think when you see this, and I'm talking, I'm talking to people who really, who really want to see God uh, this morning, His Word, when you see this, this is going to help you in your life. Uh, because it's not the negative, it's the positive, uh, positiveness of God. And why God won't let me see it. Uh, have you ever felt like uh, if God would just show you something? Amen. If God just would show you something, uh, especially sometime when you uh, are in a situation where you need him uh, to show you something so you can have confirmation uh, that God is getting ready to do something, everything is going to be all right. Amen. Maybe, 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 maybe it was in the hospital where you just need God to show you that somebody was going to be okay. Uh, maybe it's in your financial situation where you need God to show you that He's going to make a way out of nowhere. You just need to show you something. If you've ever been there this morning, you ought to put your hands together where you need God to show you something. Uh, uh, because there are times in life where, when I look out in the world, it just looks dismal. Uh, and it seems hard, and it seems challenging, and, and then uh, uh, it just seemed like sometimes I feel like giving up uh, because I, I need to see something because I've been going through some stuff for a long time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I've learned through the word this morning that God, he can't show you everything. Because if God would show you what it is that God is getting ready to do, you would get so excited, you would mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You, you would mess it up. And, 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 and God is saying, I can't show you what I'm about to do. Because if I show you, you, you're going to blow it. Watch the text. The Bible says in verse 39, now watch this. Because part of your problem this morning is that you want God to show you something, but you keep showing God you're not ready to see it. If you sit here with your head down this morning, you're not ready for God to show you because God operates differently. God do something, you say, man, I, I don't want it if it looked like that. Amen. But now, but watch this. The Bible says, therefore, they could not believe. Now watch this. Therefore, they could not believe. Uh, and so, uh, Isaiah says again, that he had. Now watch this, he had. Now I used to read this verse and I thought when I read he has that we were speaking of the devil. Uh -huh. did, did you read it like that? That the devil had blinded men's eyes. That's where it looked, that he had. And I wondered what would it mean, he had. Uh, he had blinded their eyes and he had hardened their hearts. Now, I realized that I, I, I came to that connotation because uh, of 2 Corinthians 4, because I, I want to say biblical, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse number 4. And the Bible says that if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the gods of this world. And so there it is. And so, I, so if there's any blinding and stopping of listening, it has to be from the devil. But that's, that, that was the wrong understanding of the text. The text says he had. God had blinded their hearts, hardened their hearts, and he had, he had blinded their eyes 
so that they could not see. Mm. They cannot see, nor can they understand. Why in the world is it that my Lord and my Savior would blind my eyes and harden my heart so that I can see and I can understand? Why is it in the text that Jesus is standing right before the Pharisees and the Pharisees are not allowed to see him as the Messiah? And so I, I, I begin to, to go back in history and, and, and try to understand what's going on because after he says that, he says that, 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 that something would take place if they, if they saw it right now. Uh, he said that if they saw it right now, now watch the text, watch the text. He said then they would be uh, 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 converted. Now watch this. And then I would do what? Heal. I would heal them. Yeah. Now the problem is, is that Jesus has to go to the cross. Right. Uh, and if he reveals himself and they, they're able to believe now, he would have never made it to the cross. And if there was no cross, there is no remission of sin. And if there's no remission of sin, there is no establishing his church. And if there's no establishing his church, there is no grace. And if there's no grace, there is no hope. And if God showed them what he's going to do and they can see what he's going to do, uh, then it means that he would have died before his time or things would have went according to the scriptures where the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the gospel is this, that he rose and he died, he was buried and he rose again on the third day. And so it's not time for him to show them uh, what they need to see and because uh, if he shows them what they need to see, they won't do what he has to have them to do. And what God has to have them to do is to kill him for the remissions of sin. Uh -huh. And so if God says that I, I need you to kill me and they see him as the Messiah, they're not going to crucify him. God are looking at me funny right now. Let me go back, let me go back to history right now. He has to die on the cross. He has to die the way the prophet said, the way the report went across. And so in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 9, uh, you'll get this in just a minute. Just, just hang tight. And, and I want to talk to the folk who, 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 are really, who really came here to give God praise this morning. Uh, because, because I recognize that, that everybody didn't come to give him praise. But I'm talking to folk that came to give him praise this morning. Watch this. God says, what did uh, uh, Isaiah say when he said in the text? In Isaiah 6 and verse number 9, he says, now, I, I want you to do this. Go up to verse 8 because I want to show you very quickly because this is God speaking here. Verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I seek? Whom shall go for us? And then Isaiah says, Here am I. Do what? Send me. Send me. Yeah. Now watch this. Uh, and, and let me check off just for a minute. The text says, Isaiah, uh, 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 Isaiah says this because he saw the glory of the Lord. Isaiah prophesies that the Lord would be crucified by his own people. Isaiah saw the crucifixion as the glory of the Lord. I'm going to make this make sense to you in just a minute. But right now, it's prophetically preached. And folk don't understand that, that God sometimes in order to build you up, got to tear you down. And so he says, you shall indeed have ears that can what? And eyes that cannot what? Cannot see. Uh, and a heart that cannot perceive. Are you with me? And then he says in Isaiah 53, who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Uh, all right, so, so Isaiah is prophesizing that there is going to come a time that folk would have a blessing right in front of them that they can't see. Amen. Somebody in here this morning, God has a blessing for you, but he had to stop you from seeing it because every time he started to move in your life and you saw him moving, you messed 
lifted up. And he had to stop you. Are y'all with me right now? Because what you saw, sometimes you, you couldn't understand. And you didn't trust God like you needed to trust God. When you saw the cross being prepared in front of you, you said, Lord, have mercy. I can't do that. And so God says, in order for you to get to where I'm trying to take you, I'm going to have to blind your eyes so you'll go where you need to go. Because in this way, you'll learn to walk by faith. Uh, he, he, he won't let me see it. He won't let me see it. I, I need him. To, I need him to help me because I'm men. And if I see what God's getting ready to do, I might start bragging about it. Y'all I'm saying, man. When I see God getting ready to bless me with something, I ain't never had it take me to a place I've never been. I need God to assist me in getting there by teaching me how to shut my mouth. Y'all I'm saying, man. I need God to do something that'll help me because if he don't help me, I'll tell you something else. Sometimes God will show you, allow you to see something, and it'll be too hard to get there. Y'all not listen to me. You got, God will allow you to see somebody you love not act like they love you, and you can't go where you need to be because the blessing's on the other side of the, of the burden. Yeah. <sighs> so God will blind your eye. That, that's, why, that's why I don't worry about folk that can't see in me what God can see in me. Because when folks see in you what God, uh, when folks see in you what God has placed in front of you, folk get mad. Because they, can't, they don't understand why is it that God's going to bless you, but they ain't going to bless me. Uh-huh. Y'all yeah, catching on right now. We might get out early this morning. Y'all saying amen. Because uh, he has to blind the eyes. He has to blind the eyes. And then see, and see, and see, don't you worry because God knows what he's doing. And, and let me tell you something else. You don't want folk to see what God has for you. You don't want folk to see because when folks see what God has for you, they're tied up every time. Amen. Amen. You don't want God to see you. You don't want folk to see the new husband God has. You don't want to see your house. You don't want to see your job. You, there's certain stuff you need to keep to yourself. And because you can't keep it to yourself, God says, I'm not going to let you see it. Uh, 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 y'all look at me like y'all need some Bible this morning. I have some Bible this morning. Uh -huh, get pull up on the screen. Uh, first with the chapter 2. First with chapter 2. First chapter 2. I'm going to show you something very quickly. Because see, God's doing stuff because we can't handle what God's getting ready to do. God's getting ready to do something powerful. I'm talking to folk that sit here right now and you wear it because you can't see it because God done blinded your eyes and heart in your heart. But I'm telling you, if you are trusting God with all your might, with all your strength, you keep on praising God. Keep giving God glory. Keep giving God glory. God going to let you see it. But right now, God says, you're not ready to see it because every time I try to show it to you, you get crazy. You start getting into your own world, questioning me, doubting me, rolling your eyes, figuring it out for yourself. So I had to stop you from seeing it. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 8. Watch this. Watch this, verse number 8. In fact, verse number 9 will be apropos. Sentiment in chapter 2, verse number 8. Watch this very quickly. Because, see, there are folks sitting around you right now. There are folks sitting around you right now. Uh, make it first with in chapter 2, verse 8. Amen. There are folks sitting around you right now. That, uh, uh, in fact, let me see. Yeah, yeah, right there. Hold your spot right there. Amen. There are folks sitting around you right now. They're saying they can't see it. They're not able to see it because God don't want them to see it. Uh, but you can see it. Right. If you sit right now, you know you've got the favor of God in your life. You need to understand that you, God's getting ready to do something that you can't see. But your enemy can see. Amen. And the reason your enemy can see is because you keep telling them. Folk looking at you crazy right now because they see an anointing in your life. And they, they don't understand why you got the joy that you have. With all the stuff that you've been through, you're supposed to be mad with your head down, your hair napping, breath bad, clothes hanging off like a dust rag, rolling your eyes mad at everybody, won't even kick in the dog and everything else, but you still keep smiling and giving God praise because you can't see it, but you believe it. You believe it. And let me show you something about folk that'll mess up your blessings. Watch this. This is why I know the text is accurate. The text is right. Because the Bible says that if the enemy, look at the, look at the screen. If the enemy, the prince 
prisons of this world. Why you say the prisons of the world? Ephesians chapter uh, 6, around verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rules of all the princes of this world. He said, if the princes of this world had seen what God was going to do to the cross that we're bearing, if folk knew that by them leaving this church, it would be a better church, they wouldn't have left. Y'all let that marinate just for a moment. If, if they knew that, 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 that them positioning themselves strategically was interfering with the blessings in the church, they would have stayed right here. Amen. 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 How many of y'all deal with a no good somebody? Y'all say amen. amen. If that rascal knew that you was going to get a raise in six months, he would have never left you in the first place. If he knew that when you got laid off, God was going to hire you up. Oh, if he knew you wasn't going to always make $10 an hour, but was about to make $40 an hour, he would have never left. He thought when you lost the 10, it was time to go because God works in stuff folk can't see. And the Bible said if they knew, they would have never crucified Jesus. If Pilate knew that Jesus was going to save the world through the cross. He done never crucified. He done never crucified. Because when somebody knows that they're going to contribute to your blessing, they'll back off and let you alone. The reason you have enemies is because they don't know that it's through the hatred of men that God will lift up a person to the highest height. The more folk try to pull you down, the higher and higher God will lift you up. I need every devil around Stay right where you are because you just don't know you making me preach better than I ever have preached. I don't know how it looks. I got to shout right now. I don't know no gifts. I got to say thank you, Jesus. I need that and devil. Don't move. Stay where you are. I ain't never studied like this before. Praise God. Amen. Every low down, low down, back, stabbing, knife, will, and friend. I love every one of you because you make me better. I'm glad you don't know how much you blessing me. I met you lying all the time. Nasty spirit. Don't care nothing about nobody. And the only reason they're sitting around you is because they don't know they're inspiring you. Yeah, amen. Sometimes I'm sitting down my head down. You know, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm an Afro-American man. And I'm sitting around sometime and I have these little demons come up to me talking about, you know, you know, you know, what do I do with you? Well, I just shut down. You ought to just go. But you don't say that to your husband. When you've been married, you married, you say that to your husband, he's going to do just the opposite. Amen? Because we hard-headed like that. And so when you tell us to quit, then we sort of say, I ain't going to quit. Amen? We ain't going to quit. You say, you ought to get I ain't going to give up. And some of them even get up and try to talk to people. Y'all ought to go on somewhere. All that do is make me, I just get so smiling and start laughing because all of a sudden, I was halfway lit. I was out of my mind, but God used that snake to make me stand up and say, yeah! Is able. Amen. Yeah, God is able. Amen. And had they knew that it was that nasty conversation that sparked the fire inside the man of God, Amen. they never had the conversation in the first place. Y'all all right this morning? Y'all all right this morning? Amen. And so, so, so then so here's here's the preaching right here. God won't let you see it because if you saw how that old rugged cross looked in your life, you wouldn't go to the cross. If God let you say it was going to take you losing everything you have to get all that he has for you, you wouldn't have let go of what you had. If God had to show you, if God showed you, it was going to take you coming into uh, the graveyard and burying somebody you love before you loved him like you need to love him, you wouldn't have done it. If God had showed Job that he would lose his kids, lose his animals, lose his home, have sores on his body, lose his health and strength, Job would have cursed God a long time ago. If God had shown Joseph that he would have to go into the pen, out of the, into the pit, into the pen, in order to get to the palace, Job would have said, show somebody else that dream. But God won't let us see how he's going to do, but we have to 
reminded or reminded that folk never saw Jesus like they need to see Jesus. Folk always had some smart out of her moment. You remember in Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 through 11. Uh -huh, you remember uh, verse 9 through 11. That Jesus had come to them riding on the back of a donkey. And as he gets there, the people, the Bible said that a multitude was in front of him. And those that were behind him, uh -huh, that they were, uh -huh, they were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Uh -huh. And then they would say, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. They were shouting, but then when they saw it was Jesus, the Bible says when he came to Jerusalem, that the crowd stopped and looked and asked the question. They said, who is this? Uh -huh. You see, they were looking for uh -huh, a king that looked like what they thought a king looked, perhaps somebody like Saul. And there have been times when God brings you to a place in your life that folk look and say, who in the world is this? Perhaps you moved in the wrong neighborhood and they've never seen somebody like you move in the neighborhood and they say, what and who is this? Am I right about it? Uh -huh. That's all right. Uh -huh. Because when God does something, he does it in a way it catches your enemy by surprise. You got a manager that one day going to look up and they're going to be saying, who is this moving me out of my place? Y'all not listen to me right now. I'm trying to help somebody. Who, who is this? And this is what they say. They say it's nobody but that old Jesus who's the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. But let me tell you something. He's Jesus who can calm the troubled waters. He's Jesus that can speak to the winds and the waves of your life and say cease and desist and they stop right where they are. He's Jesus that died on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins. He's Jesus that said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's Jesus. Why can't I see it? You can't see it right now because you're not ready to see it right now. But boy, when you see him in his glory, you got to give him glory. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad this morning that I worship with folk who have seen Jesus as the Lord and the Savior. I'm glad this morning that I've worked with folk that see that he is the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I'm glad that I'm worshiping with folk this morning that see God as their master, that see him as their Savior. Uh -huh. And when you see God, the way you need to see God, then you have to know that he's God all by himself. I'm coming to a landing point right here because here's the good part. I'm, that's why I want to see with one piece at a time. Folk that don't see God as God will not worship him as God. Uh -huh. There are two reasons folk don't worship God as God. Now, let me go back to the text. And, 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 and then I'm going to wrap this up. In John chapter 12, now watch this. In John chapter 12, uh, about the 47th verse or so, he says that, that, that many of the chief rulers, now watch this, believed, that a lot of folk believe Jesus, but they have not confessed him. Some of you have seen enough to where you believe him, but you don't confess him. You're not confess, what you mean? The word confess means the curios on one hand and doulos on the other hand. Confession is more than you just run in your mouth. But confession is a conscientious change in your character. And in order to confess him, he has to be the curios, meaning that they confess him as Lord and Master. How do you know? Because in Matthew 10, 32, he said, Whosoever shall confess me before me and him also will I confess. Now listen what he said. He's not saying, I'm going to be your servant. He said, if you confess me as your master, because the Hebrew word changes from kyrios to doulos. He said, so this is how the text reads in the Hebrew language. He said, whosoever shall uh, confess me as master, him also I confess as servant. You can't see this right now. But it's time you see this. You, you, you need your eyes. You need to see this. Because you got baptized. You had a belief system. But you weren't ready to make him your master. And, 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 and part of the reason 
that we're not ready to make him our master. It's because of me we got to serve him. Because if he's my master, whatsoever Christ says, I I'm going to do it. And so Christ will tell you, I want you to depend solely on me. And I don't want you to put nobody else before me. It's a scary thing to worship with folk who only confess it with their mouth but deny them in his life and put him on the back burner. And yet they have a belief of God but not obedience to God. He says, if you confess me before men as your master, I'll confess you as my servant. Before my heavenly Father, which is in heaven. Now watch this. Watch this. Back to the text. I know. In John 12, 42, it says, "By be yours. The Bible says, many believe. That's what it said. Long as I believe Jesus, don't nothing else matter. Yet what your belief need become your confession. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why won't you believe he established his church? Amen. If you believe he's the Son of God, why don't you believe he ought to come first in your life? If you believe he's the son of God, why don't you give him glory as the son of God? If you believe he's the son of God, why don't you praise him like he's the son of God? If you believe he's the son of God, why don't you give all of you to him like he is the son of God? Amen. Why wouldn't they do it in the text? They would not confess, he said, because uh, lest they should be put out of the modern day religious arena. In other words, if I, if I, if I believe him like that and make him master, my mama who's been some other type of